day 23 of 3D modeling. It's all just polygons everywhere. Donuts, polygons. The Eiffel Tower, polygons. Is this the meaning of life? No, 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 they found me, no. Okay, so maybe I'm being a little dramatic, but trying to learn something this expansive in just 30 days can do a lot to one's mental health. Anyways, I make games. I've made countless classics, from Throwbro to Little Shell's Adventure, a beach themed adventure game about a turtle on But no matter what game you see, you'll notice one thing in common. There's only two dimensions, in a flat world with flat dreams. Now some of you guys have a lot of faith in me and think it's a retro design decision, but the truth is, I don't want to deal with all this. Pixel art is easy, well I mean it doesn't have to be, but I found a nice niche in my comfort zone that looks good. However, with my school semester wrapping up and having finished my last major 2D game, I felt the window of opportunity for learning 3D modeling had opened. And since I'm a poor college student with barely any time, I decided to set the deadline to learn 3D modeling in just 30 days. Now, the first decision I had to make was what program I was going to learn 3D modeling in. For me, this wasn't really a question. While there is a lot of good softwares out there, Blender is free, and that's a great price. And unlike some free things, it's actually very capable of handling big projects. And with Flow, a Blender made film receiving an Oscar right about when I started this challenge, it felt like all the stars were aligning to point me towards Blender. So let's get into my progress. I started where all of us do, spamming Google search for suggestions. I remembered that Brackies had a tutorial series for starting Blender. I learned all about the weird gimmicks of Blender. I learned how to move objects, scale them, create them, and all the basic stuff. I was kind of short on time, so I ended up making this table. And then I got real crazy and followed his tutorial to make a barrel. So cool. Yeah, I woke up pumped to learn some more Blender. Then I looked at my barrel again, and it looked at me. And I knew we were thinking the same thing. So I started from scratch to give it the design it deserves. I did this without tutorials to make sure I was actually learning stuff, and I'm glad that I was able to do it better. After that detour, I made plans to make my next object. I really debated the donut tutorial. I didn't want to do it because it felt cliche to me and kind of overdone at this point, but then I realized it's like the hello world of Blender, so I had to. I didn't end up having enough time to make it look good, so I decided this would suffice. Now on day three, I meant business. I wanted to create some cool stuff. I found this tutorial by Grant Abbott on making low poly trees, and I love this guy. I mean, he's like the Brackies of Blender tutorials. Oh, but Brackies does Blender tutorials. Sorry, Grant. The point is, I learned a lot and made three cool trees with the tutorial. But after that, I still had some motivation, so I made one all on my own. I made this cool palm tree, and I think it turned out great. It was also my first time freehanding something like this. So I may have been a little too eager to get making some stuff. I learned about how to mess with planes and make cool shapes, and then, instead of continuing to learn how to do it right, I made a whale. Let's be honest, we've all done it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this for my fourth day, but looking at it now, I almost want to try again to see if I can do better. But I'd spent a lot of time on it, and my friends wanted to hang out, and I couldn't pull the making a whale card again, so I decided to touch some grass. Now, I'm not necessarily a violent person, but I despise crab dudes, and I need to defend myself against them. So on day five, I decided to make some weapons. At this point, I was sick of tutorials, so I started blasting my 30 minutes of Nintendo music to cure your depression playlist, and I made this cool sword. And with a little polishing, I think it turned out awesome, but that's not all. I started making this hammer, but I made some mistakes somewhere and it didn't look that good. I also had plans to make a battle axe and a mace, but once again, the grass beckoned me. Recently at Plasma Studios, we've been working on a cool AI horror choose your own adventure type game called Fred's Bits and Parts. We decided to start developing it into a full game and we needed more office supplies. I used my newfound skills to create a lamp and oh my lanta, that's a big lamp. I made a subscribe button. I think the implications are obvious. Okay, one weekend. I felt like I had a handle on basic modeling now. The main goal I wanted to accomplish next was making cool characters, rigging them, and then making animations. It turned out to be really hard, but I followed a tutorial and I made Kirby. Now my first experience rigging could have gone a lot worse. That's foreshadowing. Now the goal was to make another model and to rig it up, but I ended up spending so much time getting this rabbit model made that I didn't want to do it anymore. Overall, I rate this one 6.578 out of 9.87. Now I tried to go back to the basics so I could rig, and I made this little blue guy who lives in a blue world wherein everything is blue for himself and everybody around because he ain't got nobody to listen to. He's blue, dabbo dee dabbo da. He turned out alright, but he needed a cool hat, so I made him one. Then I attempted to animate him. Oh shoot. I needed to cope with yesterday's failure, so I made a cat, but he didn't turn out good either, so I continued to be sad. 
Well, making bad models made me feel like I needed to return to my tutorial era, so I decided to learn character modeling from the pros. I watched this cool tutorial on how to make a character, and I learned box modeling and other stuff. He kind of looks like a ticked off version of the Scratch Cat, but you know, I like him. I was planning on learning how to animate him too, but then I decided, I don't wanna. Now things get exciting. All of these random characters were leading to where I, hopefully, can make my own. I did my first attempt at making Little Shell from our hit game, Little Shell's Adventure. A beach themed adventure game, he turned out really good I'd say. I couldn't quite figure out how to do his shoulders. I can only imagine him moving like a Roblox character with his current model. Hopefully I can think of a better design in the future, but it's a good start. I made a cool piano. At this point, I was really starting to get the hang of Blender and modeling cool things. Well the piano inspired me to make a drum set. This took me a while because I had to take a step back and learn about materials and shaders. I made this cool gradient and boom. We got a drum set. Now I have a confession. I love tune shaders. Games like A Hat in Time and Legend of Zelda Wind Waker are some of my favorites from an art standpoint. It also works well with what I'm trying to do since I don't really see myself making hyper-realistic models anytime soon. So I learned how to do it by making a really cool mushroom. There were a lot of milestones achieved with this project. I managed to successfully do cell shading, learn grease pencil, and use a solidify modifier to make it look like it had a hand-drawn outline. Well, I tried to do the same thing with my previously made Little Shell model, but I kind of messed it up. The outline got weird with the eyes and made him look a little bit like a Charlie Brown character. I decided to do what any reasonable man would do, and moved on. Today, I made a wall, and then I made a wrecking ball, and smashed it into pieces. And I think this is really a metaphor for life. The wall represents all the problems and trials you face in life, and the wrecking ball represents Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. If you're watching this video, you likely enjoy learning as much as I do. And if so, there's no better way to start than with Brilliant, where you effectively learn by doing. Brilliant is a learning app that makes it fun and effective to explore complex topics like math, science, computer programming, and even artificial intelligence. And I'm not talking about sitting through dry lecture videos. Every lesson is interactive. You're solving problems, making choices, and getting instant feedback as you go. It's designed to help you think through ideas, not just memorize them. And that makes the learning stick. One of the things I really love about Brilliant is their first principles approach. Instead of dropping you into a bunch of formulas and hoping you follow along, they start from the ground up. You build your understanding layer by layer, which is so much more satisfying and honestly, way more fun. Whether you're a student, a working professional, or just someone who enjoys learning new things, it meets you where you are and challenges you to keep going. To get full access to Brilliant for a full 30 days, just search brilliant.org slash plasmastudiosdev. Scan the QR code, or just visit the link in the description. You can also use it to get 20% off on an annual subscription. Thanks, Brilliant. So I noticed I was repeating the same bad habit. I would try to learn animation and rigging, but get discouraged and make something else. So I decided to start with something so simple that I couldn't mess it up. Something so simple that it only has one single bone to animate. I started by making a slime. I based my model off the Slime Rancher slimes because I love them. I made this happy green slime, then thought I would do something similar to our other project, Slime Races. Yeah. Slime races. I made an orange sleepy slime, and I made a red slime, which, you guessed, is angry. I then put them together to make... Slime Races 3D World! Nope, 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 nope. So now I knew I could get a simple model rigged up and wanted to build on that slightly. I created this little teardrop dude. He was supposed to be really simple so I could animate him, but I actually fell in love with his design. It took a couple hours, but as you can see, he's rigged up. As a bonus to reward myself for all the time it took to do this, I made him play piano in an endless loop for the rest of eternity. I then felt like I could do anything. I made this simple octopus squid thing. I gave him drumsticks and made him play the drums. Making weird guys play music was starting to become a strange obsession of mine, so I set out to make an entire band. But first, I need more instruments. I made this guitar model. It was pretty easy to make, but this is by design. I found that I learn best letting the difficulty grow in waves. Then I reward myself by taking newfound growth and skills and going back to easier tasks. It makes me feel good about myself so I don't become like the depressed slime. With every guitar, there's a guitar player. A at least I think so. I think I'll name him Ed. I actually really love his design, although there are times when he looks like a me with that haircut. I handed him the guitar and he popped off. As you know, I hate crab dudes. I mean, absolutely despise them. So much that I decided to make one. It felt wrong not to since I've made a crab boss in all of my games so far. This ended up not being too bad once I got the body made. 
I feel like I was really able to solidify my modeling and rigging abilities with this one. And I even made him do a rave. And on day 28, I created the Plasma Man. Oh, you don't know who the Plasma Man is? Well, consider yourself lucky. He's a soulless bounty hunter as old as time. He's attracted by sea bear attacks and non-epic plasma gamers. <laughs> Wait, you're not an epic plasma gamer? Oh, this is bad. Well, it's simple. All you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, join the Discord, and you can be free from the Plasma Man's attacks. And I had to get on it because I don't know where he went. Please note, the Plasma Man is not contracted by Plasma Studios LLC. If you are visited by the Plasma Man, do not sue us. Due to recent events, I decided to create a chicken jockey. No, stop throwing stuff. No, no. And to wrap up, I really want to make some kind of scene that I can be proud of. I threw the whole band I made on this colorful stage, and a band this good deserves an audience, so I made a group of crabs as their audience. While I'm definitely not making an Oscar-nominated independent film anytime soon, I think these skills are going to serve me well as I try to make bigger 3D games in the future. Make sure to subscribe to see what happens next, and stay epic, Plasma Gamers.